one of us just to die, Lord. You were born because you loved us so much that you wanted to spend time with us, teach us your love, <coughs> and die the death that we should have died because you loved us so much, Lord, and you resurrected, showing us the life that is possible for all of us, Lord. I pray that in December, Lord, we will especially, especially take more care to do our quiet time with you every single day, to spend time with you and just thank you for your sacrifice <clears throat> and your salvation for us, Lord. Open up our hearts right now to receive your word and to mature in you, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, guys, let's all stand up and read just short verses. Genesis chapter 2, 15 through 17. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Okay, let's sit down. You guys are wondering, what a weird verse to read for Christmas. Today, the message is going to cover the question, ask the question, why did Jesus have to die? Now, all of December, I'm going to be preaching on why did Jesus have to die? Three weeks of why Jesus had to die. Today, I wanted to start the series with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. How many of you know why I'm starting with this? Okay, it's a hard question. Let me tell you. When we talk about Christmas, yeah, <laughs> oh. Let me help with this first. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So, when we talk about Jesus Christ being born to die on this Christmas day, some of the questions that I received previously is this. Well, why did people, why did God make it possible for us to sin? If God didn't put the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we would have sinned. If we didn't sin, we didn't have to die? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Whoa, <laughs> that's <so> smart. <laughs> Think about this. I mean, I heard this many, many times. They said, okay, God died. But, if there was no tree, if we weren't allowed to sin, He didn't have to die. Well, why did He make this tree? So, today I'm going to start with Genesis. Why did Jesus have to die? We're going to start from the beginning. Okay? So, what do you think? Why did God create a world where there was possibility of disobedience, evil, and sin? Why did God make that happen. 
Why didn't God make a world where there was no possibility to sin? In fact, why didn't God make a world where sin didn't even exist? Why? For everyone who's thinking about this, everyone who's contemplating this, I want to ask you this. If you were God, if James was God the Almighty, how would he create the world? How would he have created the world? Now for thousands and thousands of years, theologians have been asking the same question. And what the scholars have come up with is three possible choices. Number one, God could have made a world where sin did not exist. Right? There's no such thing as sin. World where there is no such thing as good and evil. And because there is no such thing as good or evil or sin, there is nothing to choose from. It's like giving us a world with just white. There's no yellow, there's no orange, they're just white. And God says, choose any color you want. But everything is white, there's no other color. Okay? That's number one. Create a world, a universe, where evil didn't exist. Number two, create a world where possibility of sin exists. But he creates us. He pre-programs us. He hardwires us so we would only choose good. Okay? So there is <coughs> Satan. There is evil. There is so there is possibility of sin, but we are programmed where we don't have a choice. Every time we follow God's commandment, we are not given any choice. Okay? He could have made a world like that too, right? World number three. He created a world just like the one you are living in right now. Where God gave us the tree and gave us a command. Don't eat it. Simple. Don't eat it. Because if you eat of it, you are going to be plain God. You are going to be the God of your life. I am, you are no longer going to accept me as your God. Three choice of the world. And this three choice happened. I mean, all the scholars in a couple of thousands of years, this is the only three that they actually came up with. But why didn't God just create option number one or option number two? Where sin didn't exist, but we could only choose good. Would it have been a place without sin? Yes. Would it have been a place without hatred and suffering? Yes, but it would have been a world without humans as we know it right now. It wouldn't have been a place where there is people like you and me. It would have been a place without love. Let me explain this. You see, you cannot have genuine love where there was no freedom not to love. Understand? In order for you to have genuine love, you need to have a freedom not to love. That's the only way where genuine love is possible. If you had no choice, it wouldn't be love. It'd just be compliance. It'd just be obedience. It'd just be acting the way you were hardwired, like a robot. If you had a robot and you program, so every time it's on my face, it says, I love you. Every time I come home from work, it would say what? What would it say, Bora? I love you, right? I programmed it. It has to say it. It cannot not say it. I come home, it says what? I love you. Is that genuine love? 
No. In fact, it's not love at all, right? Just doing what it's programmed to do. So why did God create the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Why did God give humans a free will with choice? Why did God allow a world where he would have to pay the ultimate price of suffering and dying for us? To make love possible. To make love possible. If there was no choice, or he said, I give you a choice, but everything is just white. Choose any color you want, but there's only white. There's no true love without freedom. Why did Jesus make the world he made as today? Because he wanted to make love possible. You see, to truly make love possible, God gave us the greatest gift of free will. And with this gift of choice comes the possibility of making the wrong choice. Right? If I tell Daniel to clean his room, with that comes his freedom not to clean his room, right? He could obey me and clean the room, but he could not obey me and not clean the room. The entirety of the Bible confirms that the thing that God values most is love. I'm going to read from, from 1 John 4, 16. It says this, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God doesn't just only love. He is love. Because our God is a God of Trinity, because there's three God in one, God has been in a loving relationship for all eternity. He's been loving forever. It's what He does. It's what He values the most. And it seems that God has chosen to create a world where the ones, where people like us live, He created human beings in His own image to love. So that people like you and me can truly love God and truly love each other. Now, because I am a father, I understand this a lot clearer now than when I was your age. Is a world an ugly place full of danger and possibility of all kinds of evil and suffering? Yes. Oran knows it too. And she's a younger lady. <laughs> You turn on the TV, and what do you see all day long? Hatred. <coughs> then why did I have Daniel? Why did I bring him into a world full of suffering and evil and violence? Why did I bring him into a broken world like this? Am I an evil dad? Am I a bad dad? Do I get pleasure out of... Bringing Daniel into such a world to say, hey, you suffer. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Am I an evil dad like that? No, of course not. I brought Daniel into the world, even with all of its evil and suffering, because there is also love and beauty. I had Daniel because of the love that he can experience. Actually, he's experiencing it every day. Every day I tell him I love you. And he says, oh, that's gross, Dad. Don't say that. <laughs> he's getting old. He, he says, don't, don't, don't come near me in public, okay? <laughs> but he knows. He, he experienced, he's experiencing love. I had Daniel because he could see beauty that's all around him. He could see this beautiful earth that God has made. He's perplexed by the plants and the insects and then the things. How meticulously it was created. It's beyond imagination how things fix itself and it heart tells, you know, the blood work to go pumps and I mean everything is such beauty. I brought Daniel into the world because he can do good things in this world to make it more beautiful. 
make it more loving. Would I rather that Daniel didn't suffer? Of course. Would I rather have it so he doesn't sin? Of course. But if that means taking away all the choice from Daniel's life and making him into a robot, I would never ever do that. I would have Daniel the way he is right now. I would never want to make him into a robot where he couldn't do sin and just say, I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. And that's the only thing he was programmed to do. I would never do that. He would never realize my love for him. He would never realize my true love for him. He would never be able to truly love himself. He would never have true relationship. He would never be able to enjoy God. I am so thankful that my parents had me, that I was born into this world. Did I sin? Of course. Am I sinning? Of course. Did I suffer? Yes. Did I go through life's disappointments, heartaches? Yes. But I also experienced God. I also met my wife and had this beautiful relationship called marriage. I had Daniel, and I had this beautiful relationship called family. I would have never had any of that if I wasn't born. I could have fellowship with my fellow brothers, including all of you. There's beauty. There's love. Because my mom had me, I'm experiencing all these things, and it fills me joy. Understand? As I conclude, the classic defense of God against the problem of evil is that it's not logically possible to have free will and no possibility of sinning or evil. You see, every time we use force to prevent evil, I prevent somebody to do, from doing something wrong by using force, by supernatural power. Can I reduce, can I prevent evil? Yeah. But in order for me to prevent all evil, I must remove all freedom. Understand? I have to give people no choice to, to do anything bad. I have to control their minds. I have to control their heart to prevent all evil. But preventing evil ultimately results in preventing love. Only when we experience the despair and suffering of sin can we truly see and appreciate the true goodness and true beauty of God. Only when we experience the unlove resulting from sin can we desire and rejoice for the unconditional and unbounding love of God. For all of those who do not believe Jesus Christ and mock His sacrifice, they have to answer, without God, how do you explain love? How did you become a creature that has the capacity to love? From an unloving, unfeeling, no emotional, just matter. How did you get from there to the love of parents, to the love of brothers and sisters, and love of your fellow people around you, and animals too. So as God made a world like this, where we could have, where we would have, where He would have to pay the ultimate price of death, so that we can love where love is possible. Are you realizing His love? Are you loving God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind? Are you loving your parents with sincerity? Are you loving your brothers and sisters, considering their needs above yours? For all of the brothers and sisters, you know, do you love to you more than you love yourself? She, do you love to you more than you love yourself? Are we loving as God is telling us to love? 
These brothers and sisters in the world who does not love God, who does not know God, who are lost, are you loving them by giving them the good news of Jesus Christ? This Christmas season and beyond, I pray that all of you, all of us, will realize God's love for us and be able to share God's love. Because God made this world as it is now. Because he wanted to make a world where love was possible. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. You know, when you made this world like this, you knew already that you would have to suffer. That in order to pay for the consequences of your creation's faults, that you would actually have to die on the cross. But even with all of that, you chose to make a world like the world we have now, where you would have to pay the ultimate price, because you wanted to make love possible for all of us, Lord. So we could freely love you, we could truly love you, we could realize your love for us, and love you back in the same way, Lord. As we sit here, and as we say we are your children, I pray that we would ask you to fill us with that love, Lord. To fulfill us, to complete us with that love. So that that love would shine through us, Lord. That we would act with that love. That we would be love, Lord. Just like you are love. I pray that you would really help all of our youth in this Christmas season to be a loving person. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to him. Okay, let me make an announcement. Okay, youth group. Right. One, at the end of the year, we have the youth conference, right? We have seven people signed up for it. And